Welcome to Brightly, you radiant being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul-driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself inch by inch. Yay! Hey there, Tracy. Hi, Amy. How are you? Doing, doing very well. I feel, very well. yes, it's a, I feel much better than I have felt for a while. <laughs> Do you think it's that Leo sun? <laughs> I tell you what, that Leo energy, that Leo energy is kind of fierce right now. I'm, I'm enjoying the Leo energy. I am. Well, after our last week on dreams and like how to be your best self or the past couple mm-hmm. weeks, I should say, I've started noticing more and more people on like social media, podcasts, TV, just people I know too, like showing themselves so much grace. Um, and just being open about not wanting to silently suffer for the comfort of the group and things like that. I mean, most notably when we're recording this, um, the, the U S gymnastics team. Yes. Simone Um, Biles. Yes. But, uh, I was wondering, do you think, is it something shifting in the collective is, or is it that time of year is Leo that self more selfish time of year? I can't remember any other July, August period where I've been like, yeah, time to do me. Um, but it's been nice to hear other people on podcasts and self-improvement personal development podcasts be like, it's okay. I haven't been my best lately. It's okay that I'm not doing as much as usual. I, I, I mean, by the time this airs, Leo season will be over, Yeah. but while we're recording it, while we're in the moment, it might be a combination And it happens to that Leo um, might be not exaggerating it, but getting more force behind it. But I think it's a switch in our collective and how we're um, facing life and facing up to things. And and that what we have expected from people in the past um, is uh, ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and what we've expected of ourselves maybe yeah. is ridiculous. And when I when I look at what's been going on in the collective, you know, through all the events of last summer, um, mm-hmm. protests, George Floyd, uh, all sorts of things, is how people respond to other people is more and more people stand up in support and in defense yes. of people taking care of themselves or people who are typically more the minority Um, and telling the people who don't know what they're talking about and just like making these unconscious demands based on what nothing other than it's just how it's been done. Right. Exactly. Right. And yeah, power shift. Um, Definitely a a power shift. Yes. Oh, I like that. A rebalancing. And I'm glad that you brought up just kind of like the minority that, that I think, especially with, um, with black women, that that Mm -hmm. happens a lot. Like, oh, you're tougher. You can do this. You need to keep doing it. And no, no, you don't. And you need to think about your mental health and your, your body health and your spirit health and everything, which we, yeah. Are the expert in you. Who the hell is that right? Olympian? Oh no, no, you're fine. Like she clearly has better mind, body, soul, heart connection than any of us. She has the gold medals to prove it, right? And right. You didn't you look at her skill set and to look at her and be like, oh, you're selfish. You should have pushed through it. Like, mm-hmm. what is that? Like, allow people to like trust people to know themselves, right? Like, don't doubt them. Don't cause them to yeah. Doubt them. And I think we need to let doctors know that as well. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's that's the one thing when I worked with parents with little kids with autism that you know when they'd say something or be like, oh, maybe that's dumb, or I don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe that's what everybody goes through, and I would just stop them and say, you are the expert on your child. You are absolutely like. Yes, like you can rely on the professionals and other people, you know, to give you a little bit different perspective on their experiences, but you know, your child and especially a child that can't speak for themselves. Like, don't let people take that away from you. And I think it's true about yourself. I think how often do we doubt ourselves because of what other people say when who, who knows better than you? Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so to go back to like the time of year, so let's say, you know, yeah. we've been talking about Leo season and how, when this airs, it'll actually have just shifted into Virgo season, my favorite season, my season. <laughs> um, but even if you aren't into horoscopes or some of the more, you know, universe minded things we talk about, there is kind of like a flow of the year based on where you live and based on what you're used to doing. So for me personally, this time of year is like starting school, even when I'm not starting school, like ending summer. Um, you know, we live in a state that has four distinct seasons. And so we have what they call Minnesota Fridays, right? So at the very least on Fridays, you know, most people are gone because they're taking a three-day weekend so that they can get up to the cabin, right? Right. Um, and so August, not a lot happens. The amount of vacations and vacation times where people have been taking longer vacations to just soak up the last of this time of year makes September even professionally feel like a new beginning for me, right? Like projects that are either restarting or just starting for the first time, like it's the last quarter of the year is approaching. Um, so to me, I can see the themes between the horoscopes and how we lead our lives, at least in America, or at least where we live culturally. But what does this time of year feel like for you? So like the Virgo season, yeah. late August, early September. Oh yeah. It's all those things you already talked about, like school starting. And exactly like you said, I'm 62 years old. It has been a long time since I've been to school, but school is starting. <laughs> and so I'm always like, what new thing, what new adventure can I start? So this time of year means adventure to me. I don't know where that came from, how I started thinking that, but I know that fall, the start that, that we're not fall yet, but we're starting to get there. That is the time of adventure. The and equinox like you said, is coming. the equinox yeah. is coming. Woo! <laughs> I know. And then I've got some friends who are so summer friends. They're like, whatever you fall people. Oh, but I'm, I'm I definitely, I definitely feel like this time of year, get your planners ready. Get your goals reset again. Don't like what notebook from this back to school section. <laughs> I, I literally just got chills thinking about the back to school section, right? So I just picked up a new yellow planner for some plans or not a planner, a three ring binder to stuff with plans. I <laughs> love it. From our See, last episode. So I'm, and I think that Virgo, the fact that it ties in with Virgo because Virgo is so organized and methodical. Yes. I love that. So yeah. I mean, what else? Yeah. So many people, I love that you bring up, like there are summer people and fall people. And yeah. it, I think it's such a mindset shift. So for me, I'm, I'm just biologically a vampire, right? Like I, I'm very <laughs> thin skinned. I, everything turns red in the summers, skin, eyes, hair, like everything just bleaches. It's, it's a painful time for me. I get up with the sun so that I can get everything done outside before 9 a.m. And then I don't go back out until much later. I don't do well in the heat. I, I was made for, you know, like Northern, you know, Irish climates. <laughs> and so for me, my adventures are never in the summer. Those adventures are painful for me. And I'm like trying to figure out how to dress and how to still interact with friends and not be the one who always has to be in the shade or can't go out at lunch or, you know, doesn't like lakes. I'm sorry. I'm a pool girl, indoor pool at best. Um, but so for me, my adventures do start in the fall too, right? Like that's when I do more hikes, all the autumn drives. I get all my good ideas. Like as the sun starts to go away, we've talked in the past. I like the sun sucks the energy from me. And so like I do better in the darkness, right? Or I'm more motivated when we have smaller amounts of light than when it seems like all we have is light. It's so interesting to me because even though adventure starts in the fall, I still, I'm very much because I love, even though I'm a fire sign, I love the water. So I love to be in the water and I do like the heat to a certain extent. Um, and I do like when the sun is shining and out in the garden and things like that doesn't mean I don't absolutely am in love with fall and that the adventures start, but it's so interesting to me that you're energized by less sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, me too. I don't get it. I don't get it, but, um, I, I love, 
Um, like I'm not, I'm not a runner by any means. Like I said, I, I sprint like a gazelle in the woods sometimes, but I'm not like a long distance marathon runner. Um, but, um, when the air is crisp, I love to just go for a run. Um, okay. and, and like, I will run longer, further, farther, faster, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Summer in the humidity, when my cousins are doing the triathlons and I'm just like dying on the sidelines, cheering for them. I don't know how they're doing it. I have absolutely, again, not made for the climate, <laughs> but so this time of year for me just screams endings and beginnings, right? Like yeah. as you transition in the Northern hemisphere between the climates at the very least, you know, the end of summer and then the start of fall is kind of like this big transition. And then the burrs, as they call them, October, November, December are holidays and filled with traditions and, um, you know, all these different kind of like yearly milestones that we collectively hit and pumpkin spices everywhere, whether you love it or hate it. And <laughs> so for me, this time of a new beginning is like my favorite time to start a new routine. Right. And maybe that goes back to starting school. And like, you know, I, I tend to, I've said in the past too, like most of my jobs I've started in the fall, um, which is just kind of crazy to me that typically September, October, you know, if I wasn't starting a school program, I was starting a new job. Right. And so, like you said, get a new planner, but then like, how intentional are you being with your time right now? Especially in summer, lazy, hazy summer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering, so the, the title of the show is routine. So as we kind of start to kind of talk about routine, how intentional are you with your wild and precious life, Miss Amy? Well, when you put it that way, Miss Tracy, <laughs> apparently not very. <laughs> how so, many minutes are you with your day, your week, your month, your year? Right. right. <laughs> I am not down to the minute. However, I will say I was, I had done my mid-year check-in and kind of revamped my goals. And then I used a calendar that I thought would help. And every day it was like, this is what I need to get done today in order to hit this goal at this time and then hit this other goal at that time. And I wrote all these things down and then immediately was like, ha, yeah, that's not, I didn't do that. <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't do that either. Well, dang, I didn't do that. And it was almost as if the act of me writing it on that calendar took something out of me. And mm. I'm, so I'm struggling with how can I be in contact with the things that I want to get done every day while not having it like the energy behind it sucked out of you by writing down too much of what you think you're going to get done. I don't know. So it well, both sounds like the expectations of your energy. Like for me, and I think we've talked about that. I think I can do way more than one should mm -hmm. in a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I get upset with myself when I don't. Right. Um, but it's also like, do you see routine and spontaneity as polar opposites or can they cohabitate? I think they can cohabitate. And in fact, I think if your routine is such that it is a routine, then you can have those spontaneity times in between your routine oh. or routines. Um, because I've noticed, so uh, hopefully by the time this airs, my foot won't hurt, but my foot is still, I'm still recovering from my foot. Yeah. Um, so I still haven't gotten back into my daily walk. So it, my routine was work and work, daily walk, come home, meditate, garden or eat, then garden. And, and it's almost as if not having that daily walk. Now it's like, wait, did I meditate? Oh, I still have to meditate. It's you lost like your it's, structure. I did. I lost my structure. So for me, for, for me, in order to feel like I can be spontaneous, I need to be in a place where I have and I'm following a routine. So I, you're the same. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not even about... So for me, it's less about like having routine and then having pockets of unstructured time. It's that by following this routine, it's that whole like, 
um, you never have to get ready if you if you're already ready, right? Right. The Will Smith quote and other people. Right. Say that. So if I wake up and make my bed and make sure that the dishes are always done, and someone wants to come over, you're, you're ready for if it. That's great. You're ready yeah. for it. If, yeah. if I do my laundry when I need, you know, when I've said I'm going to do my laundry and a big event comes up, I don't have to freak out about where my dry cleaning is because I already know my dress is ready for Friday, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So there's certain things that if, if you invest the time early in enough, you're ready for it. Or even simple things like if I am doing things for my body, I am now ready for a really uh, energetic hike over the weekend or somebody wanting yeah. to go mountain biking, right? Whereas if I've been really laissez-faire with my routine throughout the summer and then something comes up, I'm now huffing and puffing on that hike. I'm now the last person yeah. up the mountain, right? And so it's about like enjoying both the fun plan stuff and then just being ready for these spontaneous things to come up that are in line with what you want. So yeah. when I think about a routine, it's less about like being so structured and, you know, the daily grind and more about like looking at your time and your energy and knowing what you value and then investing those things. So I feel like maybe just like the minute you said that not being quite so structured, I realized I was way too structured with what I put on my calendar to the point where something inside of me was like, oh, hell no, we're not doing that. Like yeah. if maybe, but yet other times- You have to listen I, to resistance, right? Like there's there's a difference yeah. between I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to do it and like actual resistance and everything in you is going to make sure you don't do it. Right. So what? <laughs> no, I mean, so first of all, so when you look at investing uh, and looking at your time and your energy, and then you're considering routine or structure or whatever schedule, whatever you want, you know, language you want to put it in, it's about strategizing your life as an act of self care. I heard that on TikTok a year ago, and sadly, I didn't save who said it, but yeah. It has stuck with me. So thank you. I really uh, like anonymous that. TikToker, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So here's a little trigger warning. Like I am going to be talking about number of hours in a day and how we're using it. So if you're feeling stressed out, maybe this episode is not for you, or maybe you do need to hear it as an act of self-care, but yeah. like, I'm going to encourage you to look at the numbers, look at the category of your life and see how your math shakes out and how much you can really do on your very best day. Right? Like we all have different levels of energy. So I have a schedule for when I'm my very best or a routine. And then I have one for when I need to take it easy so that I'm ready to make good choices and decisions. Which if you missed it, our last episode, we really kind of went deep on that. Like yeah. your best is your best, not like not somebody best. else's best and not the best. But yeah, yeah but so how... I, I'm so guilty of this. So even though I have all these different um, tools in my tool belt and tricks and ideas and stuff that I've learned and stuff that I strive for, I definitely have my days where I'm just like, I don't know where the day went, right? Like I just, I, I, I did the work that needed to get done and the rest of it, maybe yeah. tomorrow, Tracy will be more on top of it. Sorry. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I'm really, I've, I've been grappling with this idea this year and trying to push myself more around what I consider self-care. And I want to bring you back to uh, maybe six months ago, maybe a little less, but uh, I saw a Peloton commercial just before we were recording. And in it, this woman is literally, she's laying down trying to wake up or trying to sleep in the morning. She has five or six kids. They're piled on top of her. They all have needs. They all have different things. She's talking about the day ahead of her. She's a very successful woman with a great job. She's got a spouse. She's got relationships, friendships, all these requirements on her. So she's talking about how she only has one hour a day to herself, just one hour a day. And she chooses to ride her Peloton. And I was flabbergasted. I was like, you give that much of yourself every day to others. And the one hour you consider for yourself, you're exercising. And then you said something to me that stuck with me where you're like, Tracy, exercise is my self-care. And I just, it made me wonder like, what is self-care? What is that whole <laughs> yourself, right? Like, well, right. 
what is, and so self-care obviously looks different to different people. And I don't disagree with you. I think exercise is important, but to me, that's one of the requirements for day to day to make sure your body is functioning, right? To make sure you have a long and healthy and prosperous life. Mm -hmm. That's not my one hour for me. That's just one of many hours in my day that kind of also benefit me, but I have to do well, right. And honestly, if I were that Peloton woman's friend, I'd be like, what are you talking about? You only have one hour to yourself a day. That is wrong. Although, yeah, so um, yeah, on that level, yeah. she's got too many commitments, right? So that's yeah. a different kind of life assessment. And maybe, I mean, if her yeah. life brings her joy, fills her cup, good on her. But for me, I was just like, it both made me recognize that what I'm doing or calling self care is actually getting in the way of me achieving goals that oh wow yes I am allowing myself to be lazy I'm not pushing myself I'm overly treating myself both in in spending money or in eating food eating out right like I'm not I'm not paying attention to the little things that add up over time and seeing the time lost and then the other resources lost too right Um, but it's all under this premise of, well, I have chronic pain or I had a stressful week or I'm sad or I need this, which I am going to say should never be discounted. Exactly. Right. So we're not saying, oh, get over your chronic pain or your depression or your sadness or anything like that. Yes. And so as the expert in me, I've had to recognize that more often than not, and granted 2020, the, the year that was, <laughs> it, it created some bad habits, right? That I have still mm-hmm. allowed myself to kind of sulk in and sit in. But when I okay. kind of reassess my life and I look at it, um, I just think about the Franklin Covey, or not Franklin Covey, but um, the Stephen Covey four quadrants that there are these different areas right. of life. And so mm-hmm. quadrant one is like important and an emergency, right? So that's a crying baby. That's a ringing phone. You know, it's, it's the house is on fire. You know, that's stuff that is in your face at that work. It's like a customer walks in and needs to talk to you, right? It's a stuff that's right there that you have to deal with in the moment. We all have that. I thrive in that. I like that place. I actually like that place as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes you feel needed. It makes you feel mm-hmm. more, but it's also incredibly draining. And it steals from quadrant two, which is the strategizing, the planning, and the working the plan. Yeah. Um, and then quadrant three. Um, so quadrant two is important, but not urgent. So we need to plan, we need to schedule, we need to make mm-hmm. routines, and we need to work ahead. But quadrant one is always going to steal from quadrant two because it's both yeah. important and urgent. Quadrant three are things that are urgent, but not important. Um, And so again, that could be a phone ringing, right? Like you could choose not to answer your phone if you don't think it's an emergency, but it's, it's, it's the stuff you allow to get in the way because you probably weren't attending to the quadrant two stuff early enough, right? So it's, it's not important, but it's in your face and you're going to do it. But then Quadrant four is what affects me the most in my personal life. And that's the not important, not urgent areas that we tend to when we feel really, really stressed or in need of comfort or, you know, just the treat yourself moments. It's the playing the candy crush on your phone. Like, oh, I just need to space out. It's. Yeah, and then two hours later. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's TikTok, right? Like it's the yeah. that maybe in small doses can be a nice break or, you know, a little bit of enjoyment, but they tend to be the things that add up quickly and steal from you the most. So yeah. for me lately, um, you know, I've been dealing with issues with my back all year. And so that's a chronic pain issue. I can't sleep. I can't do stuff. So when it wakes me up at night, I'm mad that I'm awake, right? Like time has been stolen from me. Energy has been stolen from me. Mm -hmm. So even though I have this great plan and all these tool sets and stuff I want to do, I'm not going to do it till 6am. I'm just not going to, right? Like I need to rest. I need to do what I can, but instead of just laying there and just trying to rest, instead of just meditating, I'm scrolling Reddit. I'm reading the news. I'm watching stupid YouTube videos and it saps so much mental energy and you don't think it is, but that mindless, like thinking and absorbing and not responding or creating or acting just Mm -hmm. makes you so much more tired. So that's what I mean by like the quadrant four things, right? Yeah. And then 
I find myself then waking up. I mean, it's just to say, Amy, how many Thursdays do you then wake up and wonder what the hell am I doing with my life? <laughs> no. Like, how many? How many? Just ballpark. Because I have a number, but it's kind of a high number. I'm sure you can guess the number. It's every Thursday. It's every Thursday. It's every Thursday. <laughs> and every Thursday. the funny thing is, is I'm actually, and this will probably be a month later, but I'm listening to the Lamas episode. And then you're like, oh my God, it's Lamas. What am it's I doing with my life? <laughs> I gotta say, I have, I, this year for me, and it's probably why the routine episode, like we planned to talk about this months ago, but I think it's why it still resonates with me so much right now is because I struggle with it as a Virgo and just as whatever my personality is, whatever you believe in personality tests or not, I love to plan. I hate Mm -hmm. to run the plan. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what? Because I'm a Sagittarius, but I'm also Well, my current strengths are different, but my old strengths, which are still in my top 10, were um, strategic. And then activator was another one. So strategic, like, yes, I'm like, we could do this. We could do that. We could do this. We could do that. We've got these great plans. Activator is, I think you should start this right now, right? (laughs) You're not delegating that. (laughs) No, no, I'm delegating it out. I delegate to tomorrow, Tracy, far too often. I know. I love to plan as well. So I have a disconnect between the plan and the execution. Do I get things done? Of course I get things done but I don't get them done the way that feels like grace and ease. Yes. Or I, I get analysis paralysis. So last night I had a few hours available and I had some energy, you know, I wasn't going to go out and garden because of my back, but I was like, okay, I'm going to, I have some library books that are overdue, but I still really want to read them. I have a goal of just at least paging through all of them by Friday and returning what does it, you know, like, so that I know what I'm returning and I can either recheck them out or just purchase them or audible them or something. Nice. So they're about six or seven. So I went in my bedroom and I got them and I brought them and I put them on my coffee table and I could not pick which one to start with. Could not for the life of me. They were all very different subjects, very different topics. And even with that goal of just going through. And so then I took a break and then I ended up on Reddit and then I started a Netflix show and then I did something else. And then I fell asleep for 30 minutes and then I woke up and thought it was morning. (laughs) And then I texted my friend for 20 minutes about how weird, like how just disappointed I was that I woke up and then I just got ready for bed. And like, I had, I could have read an entire book. I could have paged through all of them. The library could have received their books today, right? Like... (laughs) And so it's like, to me, it's that analysis paralysis that like on my calendar. So in my schedule and my routine, which I'll go more in depth into later, I I used to be like money Mondays. And on Mondays, we're going to get our, we're going to focus on finances. We're going to do our budget. We're going to read books and this and that. And that became so overwhelming for those times when I just could not think about money that day. Right. Or like, I'm going to do language Wednesdays and like tune Tuesdays and just like, I was never really feeling it. And although you should, motivation isn't about feeling it. I was like, this is too structured. It's too themed. It's, you know, clever alliteration, but is it really helping you? No. So instead I said, you know, from three to five hobby time, either a project or a hobby. And that can be oh, anything. I like that. I like a list on my whiteboard of like, yeah, this is a different, this is what you actively have invested in and have the resources in and the knowledge in. This is what's on deck, what you want to do. This is the seasonal stuff. So what you have to do. So I could choose from any of that. And instead of helping me, I have analysis paralysis. So I still, again, need to, again okay. so I still need, I need to, I, I, I have too many things I want to do <laughs> and right. I end up not doing any of them. Right. And so now mm-hmm. I'm just trying to narrow more and more, like, what do you want? You know, like what's most important, like what, mm-hmm. what most helps you as you look at how much time you have and what you want to do and what you're feeling like where my body is and let's start there. Right. Like right now, yeah. it, it, right now, all those lists include things my body just can't do right now with my current injury. Like I just, I can't do it. Or even just yeah. the number of appointments I have that's eating into my hobby and project time. Right. But I'm just finding that I, I just, I have too much. <laughs> I have too much I want to yeah. do. And that might be the Sagittarius in me. I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, cause of course, you know, I do too, but I think I've I think I can say, oh, this is very important. So I think I have my importance 
listed. Like but having like a journey to this year, right? Like you're yeah, yeah. from like your perfect week and like deciding what you want to do and you have goals, you're really fleshing out your goals. And so yeah. it's helping you figure out where and what you want to invest. Right. Time. And, and I do think it's important to point out once again, to the listener that I'm 62 and you're 36. And that could be one of the reasons as well. One would hope that at 62, I would know what I want to do, right? I, I kind of the opposite reaction is like, isn't this just showing how we're all a mess? Like, <laughs> we all, well, that too. Like, it takes, yeah. like it's going to ebb and flow over time. It's going to depend on what you're doing and where you are at in your life. But that like, there is no age where you have this figured it out. And in fact, we talk about this all the time. There are a couple personal and professional development authors and influencers, as well as people I know in my life who talk very much like they have it all together. And I might even sound like that on this show. And if I do, I do not. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to <laughs> just watch this on YouTube. I don't. Um, but like they just, they know, and they know, and this is how it is. And they lead the structure life. And then their next book comes out or their next Instagram post comes out and they're all like, oh, I knew nothing. And my life fell apart, but now I know. And here's the new, you know, thing. Like, I think we're all just figuring it out, right? Life's a scribble. We keep saying that. <laughs> we are all just figuring it out. And I think that I, I think I, I, um, give a little bit of grace to them only because you do think, you know, things at a certain age and you want other people to have, to understand the things that you yeah. went through and now, you know, and then something does happen and you're like, oh crap. Yeah. Okay. Here's the real thing. But I also get where you're coming from, where there, I agree. There are some influencers now who I've just stopped following just because, because it's, it's, it's every exhausting. Book. It's every book. <laughs> Yeah. Either yeah. it's their shtick or they shouldn't be an author. <laughs> they shouldn't be an influencer. <laughs> Cause like, I don't know. We're doing the same thing. Like we're sharing what we've learned, but I feel like we also do it in a way where we're like, this is what we're trying and what's worked for us. Right. We're not saying this yeah. is what you have to do. We're not super right. regimented. Like the people yeah. I'm talking about lead very regimented lives. And like, sometimes they have to, they run five companies and have 19 children in the TV show and a husband, you know, like they, their lives need structure. So I get tell it. you one thing. I here's some advice. Don't have 19 children. That's my advice. Sorry. You do you <laughs> not sorry. You you. No. But so I, I think going back to like that analysis paralysis, yeah. and having so much, like I admire people who are like, I'm, I'm mountain bike and I lift weights and I'm really into chess. Right. And like, they just have this, like, yes. these are my interests and this is yes. my life. It feels so it's like, wow, that, that just seems like so much ease and easy. And, and you just know what you're going to do when you wake up and who knows, maybe they don't. But at the same time, it also requires the same amount of hard work and dedication and planning because they now have to like they have to go deep into what they're learning about right so like that's I'm, true you know right now i'm i in my professional field i'm a master generalist i love the accountants i know i could never just be an accountant right like i can never yeah. just graphic design i love that my job i work with every department that sometimes i'm talking about public housing and then i shift to it and then i'm talking to hr and then i'm talking to somebody else about like mm -hmm disparity reduction, right? Like my day encompasses so much and granted the core of my work centers me and helps, but like the topics and what I'm learning and who I'm talking to are so varied. I keep mm -hmm. engaged. Right. And then yeah. that allows me to deep dive when I can. But so one thing that is kind of helping me to kind of like look at my goals of becoming Lara Craft and some other things we've talked about over the show. My favorite thing ever when you said <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. But so it's about habit mastery, right? Like they talk about how many thousands of hours you need and stuff like that. But in the book, The Miracle Morning, Hal Alrod talks about how days one through 10 are unbearable. <laughs> they start out easy and exciting. They're painful, they can start to be painful, but it's temporary and you have to be prepared for, you know, that easy and exciting to leave. Yeah. So days 11 through 20 of trying to master a habit are uncomfortable. It's the hardest phase. It requires the most discipline and commitment. And you really have to consider the rewards of, you know, building discipline, having clarity and that personal development goal. 
And then days 21 through 30, which they say after 20, 21 days, you've built a habit, right? Um, he calls those the unstoppable days, that that's when mm -hmm. the transformation occurs, your identity changes, you start to see what you've been investing in, right? It no longer mm -hmm. feels like work. It feels like, oh, I'm being disciplined. Oh, I'm getting better, right? Whereas that day one through 20, it's a struggle because you're not seeing results yet. It's still hard to do, right? right? And so I, I don't know, that was kind of like more so than being like, I don't have 10,000 hours. Like I already feel behind from all my peers when you talk about 10,000 hours to mastery, right? Like I can't listen to that podcast anymore. Yeah, I wanna learn how to surf, but I live in Minnesota. Do you know what it would take for me to become a surfer and invest $10,000? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd like to learn how to surf too, but I'm not going to. And I've, I've made my peace Except with that. it I for another done. life. That's what I'm always yeah, like the next time for around. another life. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it already know, happened. But yeah. So when I start a new habit, I have to focus when I look at like the routine, you know, on my best day where I'm like, I'm going to become a runner and suddenly I'm doing like couch to 21 K, you know, like to couch yeah, to 20 yeah. miles versus, you know, being like today, I'm going to walk a mile, right? Like I'm a little too intense with my expectations because I have so much information as to what the people who are good at it or the people who invest their Do time you in do you think you gather too much information on the front end and then you expect yourself to be at a higher level once you start? Is this the first time we've met? <laughs> right. <laughs> Amy, you have 36 plus hours of talking to me in this little microphone. This no, microphone. I already know the answer, Tracy. <laughs> like I'm just asking just screaming it. At you. Yes, yeah. I have that level of self-awareness and I am trying to get better at it. So like one of, the, one of my goals, I've always wanted to get back into archery, right? Like all jokes aside, yeah, I did it as a little girl with this little red kid bow and arrow. My dad would take me out into these fields or into, in the summer to outdoor, um, uh, hockey rinks because they have a natural wood fence around them. Right. It's yeah. a ring. Mm -hmm. And so he'd set me up on one end with my target and I would just do my thing, you know, and thinking I'm badass when he hasn't showed me anything, right? Like he's put all the equipment on me and he's gone to the other side with his, his high power bow and his own target. And so I've always wanted to get back into that, but I get worried about etiquette. I get worried about safety and best practices and finding a bow and finding this, finding that. Finally this year is like, you know what? I'm outsourcing that. I am no longer needing to become the expert on archery. I don't have to meet friends who are archers. I found a local club that offers beginner lessons. It's very reasonable, includes rentals, and I get to meet other beginner archers, right? So it's just like, I'm not gonna do anything other than what they tell me to learn how to do on my own until after those five sessions. Okay. So you're not going to go get books on it and watch DVDs yeah, on it or and YouTube, things like that. Because I right. find I'm then investing all my energy into the preparation, right? Versus yes. the doing of it. You know, it's yes. all in the planning and prep then. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, didn't mean to turn this into the hobby episode. <laughs> and so, when you're looking at your time and your energy and you're looking at your goals, like, Hey, if I want to become an archer, right? Like if I know that class is starting in October, I have to get my body ready for it. Right? Like you need a certain level of arm strength. You need to be used to doing certain things with your body. So there's certain stuff I could be working into my schedule and my routine right now. Right? So I, um, started when I first kind of started this concept of like, how many hours in a day do I have? I, um, I started bullet journaling. Oh, and if you're on video, you'll probably, maybe you'll see the video. We'll see um, if I can find the page I just lost as I picked up. <laughs> um, but so they had these things um, where you would draw your own schedule and then you draw your habit trackers and different stuff like that. Yeah. So I just started, you know, and this is like 2016. So this is an action on my schedule. But so I color coded my schedule and like I drew out the number of hours I'm awake just to kind of see like when you factor in sleep, when you factor in work, like what do you have? And then I started mm -hmm. at the beginning of every one. If you look on here, like I have my like big tasks and to do's, but then at the You're, top, okay. I have all the different if, hours of the day and I would pay yeah. them in. And then I would see like, crap, when you waste time, you are really wasting the, the only time you have to yourself. Right. Like, yeah. Um, I just want to give a shout out to your beauty of your bullet journal. So if you're listening to this, you should really go to YouTube, 
just to at least see the bullet journal in real I gotta life. Say, I had to stop with it because again, I would spend all my time on Sunday planning and writing it out. And then by Tuesday, I stopped checking it. Like <laughs> it just, it wasn't becoming helpful. It okay. Was, good information. Yeah. And so right. it's one of those things okay. and I know that about yeah. myself. So now I do it in a different day, but between the bullet journaling, now I'm in an Excel spreadsheet because I do want to still see that time, but it's so much faster to do than trying to do fancy yeah. lettering and have mm -hmm. all these markers and color code. Um, but so I, I started to look at 24 hours in a day and look at how I'm spending my time. And, yeah. um, and so, you, you know, and again, this is a, a trigger warning, but so you get 24 hours, it's ideal to sleep or rest a third of that, right? Spend a third horizontal. So that gives you 16 hours left. Me personally, I have an eight and a half minimum at work. So that gives me seven and a half left. Um, okay. A one plus hour commute. So I'm leaving that in my schedule, even while working from home, because I still run errands. I still have appointments, stuff like that. I know I spend up to an hour a day in my car. So it's yeah. six and a half hours left in my day. And I am single and kid free. Uh, so now I do about an hour total for personal care, maybe hour and a half, because you need to look presentable. You need to clean up for bed, all that kind of stuff. So now I have yeah. about five and a half hours left. And this is if I maintain these hour blocks and like nothing bleeds over right. This scenario, right? Right. Now I got just a little over five hours left. We got to eat. You got to prep food. I don't have anybody helping me with that throughout the week. Crap. So yeah. that's, that's about an hour plus a day, right? Between packing mm -hmm. lunches, breakfast, all that. So that gives me four hours left. Well, you need to move that body, right? Whether it's a walk or something else, that's yeah. one hour. So I got three left. Are you tired yet, Amy? <laughs> Do you have school? Do you have hobbies, partner, kids, appointments? For the love of God, naps. When do you nap? Like, I, <laughs> and how many people within all those things are also doing other things? So like when I go right. for a walk versus a run, I'll try and call a friend so that I'm making sure to get that friend time in. And although that does fill my cup in a certain way, I'm now like doubly exhausted, right? Like I use yeah. one hour as two, right? Like how many people at work are also doing other things or when you're with kids or when you're getting ready, you're also watching the news. You're also listening to a podcast, right? Like we have all these split focuses. Yeah. And it's just... When does it stop? <laughs> I don't, that's what I want to know. So now I can understand why some people are like, no, I don't sleep eight hours a day. I only sleep four. Like, yeah. So you can fit your life in. I mean, when I look at my, per like my perfect week, considering like, let's say I still, I still have to work. Right. So it's not perfect life. Right. But like, when I look at my week, the only way to fit in all this stuff, like miracle morning talks about starting your day with these things called savers. So having silence or meditation, or just sitting in silence, mm -hmm. doing affirmations, visualizations, getting exercise in reading. And then he calls it scribbling, but essentially writing. So journaling or otherwise. So just doing those, even at the minimum amount of times that he, he puts in there, it's almost two hours, right? Like if you're really exercising what you need to get, and then that also includes changing between going to the gym, getting different clothes in transition time between stuff, right? Like, yeah, even if I did just like the bare minimum, it's an hour, but I've learned for the savers to mean things to me, it's about 90 minutes. But so when I look at like that perfect day and I'm trying to do miracle morning and I'm trying to read, I'm trying to have a project hobby, trying to get different types of workouts in eating and just like having time eating, not like working also while eating, I should only be working six to six and a half hours a day then. Right. Like, well, don't get me started on that. Cause I think that's actually much better and, and let's do four day work week, but have you ever done it for a weekend day? Have you mapped out your hours for a weekend day? Yeah. So for me, it'll differ because that's usually when I plug my school work in. And so that's oh. where like I have larger chunks of time for projects and hobbies. I have a really large chunk of time of free time. But then, then it's also when the chores, the laundry, yeah. the, you know, the getting groceries, the meal prepping, the yeah. planning the week, looking ahead, looking at stuff mm -hmm. to do for the next weekend all of that falls in that. Right. And like, even the fun stuff that it can fill your cup and still exhaust you. Right. Like and I, yeah, 100. I, yeah. I, I have some friends next door that they know how to have a good time, but then they also talk about how that robs from future them. Right. Like if they have a really good time, Friday night, Saturday is now scrapped. Right. Right. Like, you're mm -hmm. hungover, you're, you're exhausted, you're sleeping in, you're losing time. And that trade-off yeah. is worth it to you. It's worth it to you. 
but like for me again this is about like best case scenario when I wake up what in, instead of what am I feeling like doing what am I supposed to be doing and it's just I don't know it's it's made me look at my schedule and be like am I holding my time as sacred well, isn't that something that we all need to do? And what did you ask me in the beginning? How are you, what are you doing with this wild and precious life? Is that what you said? What did you, um, what how question? intentional are you with your wild and precious life? I'm wild so and precious and life. And yeah. then considering holding the time sacred. I mean, that, that gives it a little bit of weight because I think we're always like, tra la la, tomorrow is another freaking day. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's going to look exactly like today looked unless you are intentional and you hold some of that time sacred. Wow. And, like when I have those days, when I do wake up and it just, I'm doing the bare minimum, the requirements to get paid, yeah. get the stuff that has to get done, done, make sure my cat's fed, I'm fed, who cares about the dishes, all that kind of stuff. Having like, a good routine in, on paper helps me make up for it the next day. That when yeah. I didn't have this routine on paper, when I didn't have something to look at, like the idea and thought of having to plan tomorrow with how much I wasted today becomes that analysis paralysis again, or the guilt tripping, okay. or the, oh, I'll figure it out, or oh, she'll have to do it. I just don't have the energy today. Mm -hmm. But when I look at this calendar, this routine, the schedule, and I'm like, oh, okay, when, cause I also do it for how I'm actually spending my time, right? Like when I'm trying to build a new routine, I'll be honest with myself and be like, what are you actually doing? So like kind of look at what the expectations you are, like you, yeah. said, you plan too much. And so when I look at it, I was like, oh, right now I'm not holding my time as sacred. Like I'm wasting it. I'm doing this and that, but I can give myself grace because my body doesn't feel good. And I haven't figured out what it can do yet. And I'm just always hopeful I'll wake up and feel better. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we're about to have a hiatus and hopefully I'm going to have a surgery and it'll fix everything. Knock on yeah. Back. Um, and yeah. so I just, I'm still so future mind focused that I I'm finding, um, what your routine should really be about is little things that add up. Right. So even if I only that benefit you, that benefit you. Okay. That, and so for me, sometimes I'll be like, Oh God, I only have five minutes to journal. Why journal? five minutes a day, oh. every day of the week is over half an hour, right? Like, yeah. or five hours today or five minutes today is more than zero, right? Like <laughs> yeah. it, it's more than zero. And so for me, I have to get out of that concept of like, oh God, I don't have an hour to go for a walk. I'm just not going to go. Right. And, and that breaks the habit that gets you out of the routine. It gets you mm -hmm. out of it. Um, so having this to start from, I can be like, oh, wow, I woke up late. Okay. I'm going to modify. This is what's important to me, right? Like how my body feels is what's important to me. Personal development's important to me and love and dating is important. Right. So I can mm -hmm. modify and look at what can go and what doesn't. And I don't have to start from scratch. I already know what works. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah. The one way to kind of start, like if you're not sure what you value, if you don't want to, don't, if you're not quite ready to do that whole exercise, you're not ready to do a year in review, anything like that, just list out what fills your cup. And then when you look at your routine and your schedule and you see the openings, find places to do more of that. That's yeah. like, yeah. right? Like just, is it talking to people? Is it dancing? Is it cooking? Is it eating whole foods? Like what, mm -hmm. what actually fills your cup and where can you fit that into the free time you might be spending in those quadrant four areas? And if you're not sh exactly sure what fills your cup, start writing down things that you think might fill your cup and then maybe try those and see what you feel like. Yeah, but in preparation of my 30th birthday, there are all sorts of people doing bucket lists or 30 by 30. And that just, yeah. it didn't sit right with me, but it all of a sudden hit me one day. I was like, what would 17 year old Tracy be really bummed we hadn't accomplished by now? I love that. I went and got so my motorcycle much. license, Amy. You know, so like think about like maybe if you're not happy or joyful right now, or if you're just kind of lost, or if, like me, too many things could fill your cup. So like, why list any of them? Or you get, like yeah. maybe go back to a time when life was really good and and try those things again and or what didn't you get to do then that you really wanted to and see if that still sparks joy yeah so for me when i look at my routine i look make sure it hits those things we say at the beginning of mind body soul mm -hmm. are, is, are those cups being filled 
Amy, what's your perfect day? Like in the here and now, not yeah. in the, when I retire, win the lottery, but like right now in the life you have today, what would the perfect day look like? Yeah. The perfect day would be getting up in the morning, a beautiful day outside. I, first I drink my water, have my cup of coffee and my journal, and I have time to actually drink my coffee, write in my journal. I have a gratitude journal that I try to do every day. I have finally gotten to the point that you did, Tracy, where it was like, oh, I didn't write 10 things today. I only wrote five. That's okay. Um, so write in my journal, then um, give myself enough time to actually look presentable because I, I think that working in your pajamas gets tiring after a while. So to look presentable, create a, have a space for my work that actually works for me. And so that I can just concentrate on the work that needs to be done or work that maybe I can like that space where you can actually create things for yourself for work. And then to step away from everything and sit down for a lunch that I've made myself and maybe read a little bit at lunch, go back to work, finish my work day, and then go walking, meditate, write for a while, and on my walk, listen to a podcast, and then write, and then either read or actually watch something that I find entertaining. I love that your day not a, wasn't just productivity focused. Like you even included, I drink my water. <laughs> I make sure my environment is conducive to what I'm trying to do, right? Like it fits yeah. the vibe of what I want to be. I didn't even mention friends, which I'm sorry, you would, you would, friends would always be peppered in there, but you're right. Yeah. It isn't all about productivity. And I give myself the time so that I don't feel bad about myself, that if I want to watch an episode of whatever I'm watching, yeah. I give myself grace to do that. And you've done so many other things throughout the day. It doesn't feel like time wasted. It feels like a reward or it feels like a different type of investment. Cause we don't just have to produce or take in, right? Like we can, like, I feel like you should be mindful with your rest. So like when I say, mm -hmm. you know, mind, body, soul, um, both body and soul include intentional rest. Like when I'm sitting and scrolling mm. Reddit, I'm not resting. My body may be laying down, but am I resting? You're right. I don't think so. I think my brain is too active. I don't think I'm actually breathing deep or like really enjoying that five, 10 minute break I'm giving myself. I'm, I love it. Waste and fill time. And I loved it that you just gave that indicator. I'm not breathing deep. Like you understand physiologically what's happening to you while you're just scrolling Reddit yeah. and not resting. Yeah. And when my mind is active, I'm not at rest, mm -hmm. right? Like, again, my body is laying down, but I, am I actually letting it like just sink in? Yeah. Me, right. Yeah. Like you, you have to let go. So, but yeah, like you covered so many things. So for like mind, it can be personal development things, podcasts, reading books, listening to audiobooks, a deep conversation, writing, watching a documentary, right? Um, body, any type of movement, rest or pampering, right? Like a good bath can be self-care, right? Like I want that added to my day. <laughs> <laughs> and then for soul, you know, that can be meditation, yoga, friendships, again, yeah. intentional rest, scheduling in fun and playfulness, the work hard, play hard mentality, right? Like, is there time for playfulness in it? Or when you look at the time you have, like, yeah. you can be moving your body and you can have a goal of working out, but like your workout can be like, as we've shared, running in the woods with a movie soundtrack on, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be, I lift weights and I'm, I'm right. Arnold Schwarzenegger and I'm just on task and I'm counting reps. Like you can make your workout fun. You can make your workday fun. Like you can make your cooking. Like I like to play music for whatever cuisine I'm cooking that matches I love like it. make the space and the vibe fit what I'm doing, right? Like yeah. or just play music in general. I film my 
it's really funny. Like in, in my office, I'll either have like the news on in the background or I'll have music. And then in my kitchen, I'll have a radio station on a little clock in there. And then in my bedroom, I have like lo-fi lo tunes just kind of going. So like, I, I definitely do have times of silence. I do love my silence, but like, I never lose that vibe that I, so like when I go and I go to cook, I don't get distracted. I don't put YouTube out. I don't try and put a TV or a Netflix show on, right? Like I already got music going on in there. There's already like, it fills the space in a way that helps yeah. keep me focused. Yeah. Um, and then the soul can also be time in nature, right? Which can again, be love your it. workout time or be when you're mm -hmm. reading your book or meditating or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, when I, so like I have, I have a grid. I'm not going to show it because it's a little intense. <laughs> it's, again, it's best, it's best case scenario, but I color code it, right? So I have drive time, personal care, eating, preparing meals, different types of workouts when I'm working on a goal, when I'm working, reading, meditating, sleeping, right? Like my weekday, I have decided what I value and what I have time for. And I'm sorry, is this your Excel spreadsheet that my you're Excel talking about? Right? Okay. So I have, it goes from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, so for me, I fully, I'm fully aware you should get seven to eight hours of sleep. I have done sleep tests. They don't know what's wrong with me, but my brain wakes up at the same time every day, no yeah. matter when I go to bed. So yeah. I've just accepted that. Um, but so then I, I color code it and I put in the different types of activities. And then my weekends, my weekend time allocation, I have different values. I have venture time, free time, friend time, errand chore time, right? More sleep is in there. Um, but then I have a separate one where to help keep me focused, I actually break down, well, what am I doing at 4 a.m. during my personal care time, right? Like if I do wake up at 4 a.m., while I'm waking, I'm listening to my heart opening music. I'm doing the white light visualizations that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing that, what you shared early on when we first started the podcast, where you visualize and greet your happy organs, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking my 16 ounces of water. I have an abundance prayer. I do my affirmations. I get my watch on so that I don't forget my Apple watch do some, you know, I, I can't start my day without brushing my teeth, <laughs> take my probiotics. Um, I change my clothes and my workout clothes, and then I do an aura cleanse, right? Like it's so easy to lose sight of how many that's 15 minutes. Like that's a lot of stuff, right? But yeah. it's like things that that's how I want to wake up. It's how I want to start my day. Mm -hmm. That's the stage. But if I wanted to just put personal care, I could just wake up, check my email, roll out of bed, put on clothes and then go for my walk. Like, which is going to be the better day. Right. So like, I have this little checklist to, to go to, like even put free dancing on here. Like, don't forget like to just dance, right. Like just to have some fun. Um, and then I also included what vitamins I want to take when and what types of foods I want to eat throughout the day so that I'm not losing sight of like that impacts your ability to have energy to do your routine. Yeah. Um, and then I also give myself credit then, like if I am exhausted, like you said, at a certain time of day, and I do just want to sit and watch the Food Network, I can without guilt. And not that you should ever guilt yourself, but I can look back at my week and say like, hey, it's Thursday. Look what you've done with your life. <laughs> look what you've done. <laughs> And so, on that note, <laughs> this is, we need to start recording this on Thursdays. Um, <laughs> I think we do. So um, I did some tarot cards and this is kind of crazy. So I, the first card that jumped out really spoke to me for what we're going to talk about next week. And we record two in a day. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know what, universe, thank you. I'm going to put it back in. What else comes out? And it turns out you had a similar experience when preparing for the next show we're about to record, but your first two cards matched the cards that I picked for this show. And by yeah. picked, I mean, like they came out, like I didn't like yeah. flip through the deck. But yeah. So um, the two cards I got were the seven of pentacles and the 10 of swords. Do you want to yes. describe them? Yes. So the seven of pentacles, it looks like a person who's sort of um, leaning on his uh, gardening apparatus and he's looking at this this bush right and it looks as if he's like contemplating the work that he's done and and what is growing from that and then that's the seven of pentacles and then um the the ten of swords is a person laying on the ground on their stomach there are 10 swords sticking out of their back. This is the one that it's just like, I believe at one point I did sort of a theater of like, Ugh, 
that's like the end. Like I can't take any more, right? It definitely, I mean, no shame to this guy, but it speaks to giving up. It does. Vibe of giving up, which granted 10 people stabbed you, maybe it's okay to give up. So then like, <laughs> just wait. But, but the general next vibe. Thursday. Okay. <laughs> um, but so for me, when the two came out together, the story that immediately came to my head or like the phrase was toil or suffer. That, wow. Right. Like, I really like that. That toil to reap the big rewards, because you said he's kind of reflecting on what he's done. And I kind of see some of his energy in this and his face as being like, oh, I have so much more to do, right? Like there's still some stuff on the ground that he has to do. Absolutely. Kind of pause during the mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so the seven of pentacles though, is really about that willingness to invest now for a bigger payout later. So that's your energy. That's your time. That's mm -hmm. doing things. Maybe in the moment you don't want to do, but like whatever you gain from doing them, you do want that, right? Like you got to do the work. You got to do the work. And honestly, I mean, every single person who speaks on motivation or anything like that will always talk about doing the work now so that later you can reap the rewards. Every single oh. person. And like anytime I'm feeling the need to procrastinate, I just tell myself tomorrow you does not want to do this either right? Like 3 p.m. Tracy does not want to get stuck with the dishes because 6 a.m. Tracy wouldn't unload the dishwasher she ran last night, right? Like just do the thing. You have the time now, you know, what needs to get done. And yeah. then you, you have all this open time in front of you, not a task you're dreading. To right. Do, right. Right. Um, and so this card for me is like, you're finally seeing the results of your hard work. It doesn't mean it's not hard. It doesn't mean you're done, but like you are continuing to adapt and overcome. You're a Marine, right? Like, <laughs> but you're investing your attention in the right areas can be slow results, but you just got to manage your expectations. And then the 10 of swords on its own. I was surprised when I read this because it kind of matches the vibe. Like I said, of like, dude, you did this to yourself. Kind of like you gave up, but, um, Biddy Tarot talks about it's a victimhood. Wow. And that eventually, you know, either, you know, when it comes in reverse, I like this card because it's like all the swords are falling out and like your yeah. suffering is done. But like, she, she just talks about like the, t now is the time to pick yourself off the ground and start over. It's not getting any worse. It's worse. You, you get, you get 10 swords in your back. So get up and get started, get going. Right. Like, like once again, stop. Get, you can't give up. You, you yeah. can't. Yeah. It's, so much harder to try and crawl out of a hole than to not fall in it in the first place. Right. Like, yeah, they both but it required... doesn't mean you shouldn't crawl yeah. out of the hole. Oh yeah. If you're already in the right? hole, keep going. You got yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah. If, if you're like, Oh, maybe I'll just fall in the hole. That seems easier. It's not, it's I've been there. It's not, it's not easier. It's worse. It's so much worse. The falling <laughs> is worse. The being in there is worse. The crawling out is worse. It's just, it's, it's all, it's, none of it's good. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a split second where you're like, oh, I'm not doing anything. And then you're, it's, ah, oh, shit. It's Thursday. What am I doing with my life? Uh, <laughs> 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 well, Amy, you mentioned, you alluded to, so like you got the same cards, but you felt like they were more for today than your show. So what, what are we talking about in episode 37? What's coming up? Yeah. Um, hey, fun, fun topic. We're going to talk about grief and loss. You're and about you. basically <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of different ways that uh, people go about grieving, and there's a lot of different deaths that we grieve, right? I mean, any loss can be considered sort of a death of something. Yeah, so but I, I also lost feel a person, right? Right, grieve, right. There's so many things we need to grieve that we don't. Right, and right, just like you said, it's not just the loss of a person or the death of someone. It can be many different things. But so we're going to talk about that. And I know that seems kind of heavy, but we felt like this was a fitting time of year to talk about this. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. As we look to new beginnings or even the end of a year, depending on how you look at your schedule in a year, um, there's some stuff you might have to let go of, right? Or even yeah. just like when you look at your schedule, your routine, you have to be like, wow, this is a goal of mine, but I don't have the resources to invest in it. Yeah. And yeah. 
And it's so much easier to get back to it or to allow yourself to be okay with letting it go if you allow yourself the time to grieve it. Oh, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. if this episode spoke to your soul, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate, review, and subscribe. You can also reach us on Instagram and YouTube under The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. Great. And we hope you have a bright and beautiful day. And structured day. <laughs> I almost said that. And then, <laughs> and so just, I'm glad you did. Just, you can stay bright and beautiful and you don't have to be productive <laughs> with your one wild and precious life. Do, do you? All right. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.